This week on Odd Jobs. Meet Michael Coronaccia. All he wants in life is to be dead. Everyone knows what it means to be a lawyer, a teacher, a fireman. But what about those other jobs? The odd jobs. These are the stories of the people who fill these odd jobs. Odd jobs. In today's world, death is everywhere. Nowhere is that more apparent than in mainstream Hollywood. In today's entertainment industry, a growing group of actors is taking the main stage on television. These are the death-only actors, the DOAs. These are the working stiffs. I remember the first time I saw a dead body on TV. It was Quincy who was doing a, an autopsy and the dead guy, I saw his eye move. It was then, it was right then, that I said to myself, I could do that better. Michael Coronaccia is a working actor in Los Angeles who specializes in playing dead people. Michael has been pursuing dead roles in Hollywood for 10 years. Oh, well, I've been pursuing dead roles in Hollywood for 10 years. And more recently, the competition has gotten very stiff. I mean, it's not like I want to be like a Ben Massman or anything like that. I don't think I can be. I don't have the talent. I just want to make a living. Ben Massman is the number one death-only actor in Hollywood today. Three years ago, Ben chose to put himself into a coma. Since then, his career has taken off. Ben's a total perfectionist. He doesn't do anything halfway, so when he said he was going to go into a coma and give me power of attorney, I said, go for it. You know, do it, honey. You follow your dreams. And he has. He really has. He has been dead for Spielberg, Scorsese, McGee, and we're really excited to be in um, negotiations for um, oh, a reimagining of Weekend at Bernie's. Ben is a real go-getter, with a true commitment to the dead arts. Ben has been dead on literally every crime drama TV has to offer, and has even achieved the much sought after CSI trifecta. CSI, CSI Miami, and CSI New York. But it's not easy for Ben being the most known dead guy in Hollywood. It's not easy for Ben being the most known dead guy in Hollywood, or for me either. Um, people ask us how we make it work, and to them I say it's like any relationship, you know, you work hard at it. And we work really, really hard. I'm also really happy to say that um, we're expecting. See, it looks like he smiles a little bit sometimes. When I talk about that, he gets a little curl in his lip. It's amazing, it's like a miracle. But once you become known as a reliable dead actor in Hollywood, you are set. Because there's a whole lot of blinkers and twitchers and breathers out there. Playing dead ain't for pussies. In this specialized field, one bad performance can haunt an actor for eternity. Thus, the dedication and training required to become a dead actor is extraordinary. Did I flinch? What do you mean, ah? Uh. Did I flinch? I flinched? That's not flinching, it's when it hits me, it made my face move. But you know, I finally got my big break when I landed the death only manager, Brooke Snyder, man. She's big time. I started Open Casket in 92. I sensed there was a market right after the success of Law and & Order and Homicide and then, hello, CSIs. I knew I was right. Brooke is excellent, man. She knows all the ins and the outs of the dead game. I mean, people think it's just laying on the ground with some fake blood on you. It's not. It's an art. There is an art to this. 
if you want to play dead, you have to learn a whole set of different rules. So, you know, I send them to the best damn dead teacher in the business. There's only one. Paul Johnson. He's the guy. My name is Paul Johnson. And I started the Dead Actors Guild in the late 1970s. I'm going to say good work. I'm going to say a nice crotch stretch, reverse crotch stretch. And I always wanted to be a dead actor. I always wanted to play um, corpses, something really peaceful and beautiful about it. But when I came to Hollywood and started playing some roles, I discovered that, number one, the work environment wasn't cool. I just want to say that one of the things that I believe about when you do this, and it's very important, everyone in my class has good hair. We helped improve working conditions. I worked with OSHA and a number of state agencies on improved working conditions for specifically our guild. I'm seeing breathing. Okay, I heard that. And I'm saying you're not Vietnamese. Because we're frequently dealing with um, bad tasting blood, possibly toxic makeup. And that is just not fair to the actor. You're expecting him to lie still and you've got a bad tasting blood cap in there. So we've improved the flavors, went fresh minty gel. We have steak and lobster. A couple of really interesting flavors that only if you're a pro are you gonna get to experience. Well, you should have said something like spring roll ready or, or, or you know, uh, Ho Chi Minh City or something Vietnamese, okay. Westminster, something. Dead Actors Guild, all we ask is a little respect for the dead. Could be as simple as uh, a nice warm gurney or maybe even just a how are you doing or a good work when they say cut. This is what I'm looking for, that sweat stain, the reality of a good groin stretch. Cut print marvelous. Yeah. Cut print marvelous. To understand death, you need to see it. And to see it is how you know it. It's an interesting catch-22 in our business. And that's why whenever I'm teaching a workshop, I'll always bring in a go-to guy, an experienced, working, state-of-the-art Hollywood dead actor. And no one better in the business right now working than Ben Massman. He got the bug doing um, Sesame Street. That's how he got started. He had to play this um, little boy who was trampled by Snuffleupagus. And he had to be dead for I don't know how long. And he was a little kid. And he loved it. And he was great. Of course, they couldn't bring him back because he was dead. But even in Hollywood, death can be a cutthroat business everyone is going to leave you. Okay, so if he wants his wife to run his life and his career, that's fine. To the people that say I'm using my husband for financial gain, you know what I say to them? Keep your side of the street clean. You know what I mean? And you know what? When he was with me, he didn't need this coma thing. It's a crutch. Mark Blankenship runs the Dead Actor Database, the DADB the most popular death-oriented website on the internet. DADB is huge. It's a phenomenon. That It's off the charts. At the Dead Actor Database, any actor that has appeared dead on screen is listed and rabidly discussed by the website's fans. This is it. This is my legacy. The DADB. I owe the success to one genius. His name is Ben Massman the king of the dead, as he's known in this town and all around. You know who loves him the most? I swear to God, the Japanese. They're crazy about him. I mean, it's kind of crazy. Why do people like Michael Jordan? Because he's the best fucking basketball player to ever play the game. Ben Massman is the best dead actor that ever has been and ever will be. But not everyone is a fan of the dead actor. So yeah, I've been uh, Michael's roommate for about a year now. Mike, do you know where the remote is? Answered an ad in the LA Weekly. I had no idea he was an actor. Or, you know, I guess he calls himself a dead actor. You know, I, I don't know about this crap. I work with computers, but, you know, the apartment's great, and 
you know, the wrench cheap, so I can do with the little things. Jesus Christ, come on. What are you doing? Shut the trunk! This is my big audition for Sopranos, Jeff. Death is a tricky business, you know? Real tricky. You gotta have some sort of charisma, but you can't, you know, be stealing the scene. It's just a very delicate tightrope. Yes, you do need some sort of charisma. And today, Michael will need all the charisma he can muster. Because today, Michael auditions for CSI New York. And his competition for the role is of the highest caliber. <sighs> Trick to the trade. <laughs> I do use some performance enhancing drugs during some performances to help enhance them. <laughs> but uh, I'm not ashamed of that, you know? You, you gotta get where you need to get. <clears throat> I came to play, baby. I came to play. Nighttime's hard. Nighttime is a little hard. Um, but we're okay. We're doing great, is what we are. We're doing great, and we're strong. We're going on an audition tomorrow. Actually, we don't even audition now. People just call. And um, he's got a lot of fans. I do a lot of... Um, we send out headshots. This is Ben's headshot. And um, uh, people ask for it all the time. And uh, I actually had his signature stamped. I knew this was coming. He is committed to his craft, and I admire that. Ben and Molly's day-to-day -day is not all glitz and glamour. In fact, it's fairly routine. I, also like, I think he likes the smells um, of the kitchen while they're cooking and everything, and I also, it's kind of cheating a little bit with the doctors. He has the feeding tube, but I give him, like, I mash it up, though. So, like, this is just a little um, blueberry scone, and I just give him a little bit of that. See, so it's just sitting there. He's fine. I mean, it's not, oh, oh, honey. Oh, 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 God, honey. God, I hate that when he scares me like that. Don't scare me like that. Unbelievable. I just wheel him up here around noon, and he we do like half an hour of um, music just being in front of the piano. Like the weeping willow praise. Oh, night of the hip hooray. Praise like us we had in May. And at the end of the day, despite their success, Ben and Molly are no different from any other married couple. Look, Hibbert's bouncing all over you. Look out, Ben, here he comes. Ooh, you're making out with him. <laughs> I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna smother you, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> Just kidding, sweetie. He's still breathing, yeah. <laughs> anyway, oh, I love you. <laughs> But the gravy train has yet to arrive for Michael Coronaccio. And it looks like the train may be delayed yet another day. Yes, I got it. I booked CSI New York. <laughs> Wait, what? I'm not the victim. I'm a suspect. A killer clown. Hands on the table, no gloves. So I'm alive. No, it's fine. Just send, send everything over. Okay, Ben. All right, bye. Sorry. I guess I'm alive in this one, you guys. You know, it's... I think you could cut it a minute here. I just cut it. I mean, it's just like, it It puts food on the table, yeah, but it's not what I want. I mean, I feel like this is my third roll this month where I'm alive and I just feel like I'm getting typecasted. I'm working for my art here and it's like, 
they're not working with me for my art here. You know, I went to tell my parents. I love it when I'm dead, you know? Disappointment is a constant companion of the dead actor. Number one. All Michael can First do is get listen. back up on that Black. dead horse and ride okay. it into the ground. Because okay. you're very, very talented. And I'm hard on you. Because I'm going to remind you of a great story about CSI Miami and a young actor who went in to do an autopsy scene with Dave Caruso. He's a dead corpse of the autopsy scene. Starts breathing. Caruso throws a shit fit. Walks off the set. The only one that's punished is this actor who never again gets to work on a CSI. He's banned for life. And never works again on CSI. And you are headed to never working on CSI, Michael Cornaccia, if you do not get it together, okay? But back at Ben and Molly's, all they need is a good night's rest. For tomorrow, Ben must nail one final screen test for the Weekend at Bernie's remake. I'm pooped. I am pooped. Oh. Oh. Night, night, sweetie. Love you. Oh, my God. I forgot to take your bag off. I didn't empty your bag. You know what? Let's do it tomorrow. Okay. Let's do it tomorrow, honey. Oh, it's gonna stay there. It's not going anywhere. Oh, God. Oh, God. The next morning, Michael wakes up and waits in bed for a phone call that might change his life. Hello? Hey, Brooke. Now, come on, come on, just tell me. Just tell me. I did? Yes! I did it, yes! I'm gonna be dead on six feet under. I'm gonna be dead on six feet under, man. My book's six feet under. Oh. I'm sorry, yeah, no. And Molly, too, is proud. Because just today, Ben has signed on as the lead in the remake of Weekend at Bernie's. And so they celebrate. That is a superstar. Ben's a superstar. And he's just living the good life right now, right? Michael's episode of Six Feet Under airs. And it's a glowing triumph. The next day, Michael is the toast of the town as the trades laud his breakthrough performance. Yeah, this is a piece of cake, flossing nightmare. And a day before the Bernie shoot, Molly gets Ben ready for his biggest moment. I use this lady razor. They're really the best. They're triple blade. I use them on my legs and stuff, but, you know, he doesn't care. He doesn't know. <laughs> See, we're getting a nice, healthy um, glow after the shave because we always moisturize. It's very, very important. Okay, what's going on? Um, uh, so here, oh, he's having a little gas. He's having some gas. And, uh, no, 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 no. Please, okay, yes, please, please. Get your head please. back, get your head back, get your head back. Help this is good, this is good, this is good. Swallow that up, sweetie, swallow it, swallow it down. Swallow it down. Oh, this happens, he has these fits. It's okay. I know it's scary, it's kind of scary. It's okay. Yeah, you just sleep. We got a big day tomorrow. We've got to be on the set at 5 a.m. Yeah, so just sleep. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, when you blow in their ear and they don't do anything, that means they're really sleepy because people don't like that. In Hollywood, death plus actors equals fame. But fame can be a fickle bitch, favoring some, ignoring others. 
but that doesn't stop hundreds from following their dreams. Huge. Their dreams of death. Playing dead for money is truly an odd job. This move, I call the Elvis.